Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Um, so it's really a uh, pleasure for me to, uh, to be here. Um, so, uh, um, so this is going to be an interesting experience um, because I, my feeling is that the, there are lots of different kinds of people with lots of different kinds of backgrounds in the audience. So let me just try to get a little bit of a feel for who, who you are. Um, so how many experimentalists are in the audience? Okay, how about condensed matter theorists? Okay, a lot of them, okay. How about uh, high energy particle physics theorists? Good, okay, any, any none of the above? <laughs> okay, good, all right, so, uh, all right, so, 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 um, uh, hopefully there will be something a little bit for everyone in these talks, um, though uh, I think necessarily there's going to be um, a, a fair amount of things that, uh, that each of you will know, though they're not all the same things. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try to be um, uh, pedagogical and go slowly and try to keep it so that everybody can, can sort of keep up. And to help me do that, please um, stop me with questions. Okay, because um, you know, you know, actually, you know, I don't have enough time to fill, I have enough material to fill all, uh, you know, <laughs> two hours that I have now. So, so please. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, um, so this uh, 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 school is going to be about the intersection between um, uh, some very deep ideas in uh, mathematics and some. Uh, very beautiful um, uh, uh, ideas in physics, and in particular uh, condensed matter uh, physics. Okay, and um, so so the deep ideas in mathematics. There are sort of two sort of conceptual pillars that um, we have for the way we think about uh, physics, and those are uh, symmetry and topology. Okay, now symmetry, of course, is probably the most familiar idea. It's something that uh, certainly, as a physicist we are taught from the very first early days um, that symmetry is something that's really uh, important. You know, uh, symmetry, um, uh, now why is it that my pointer only points there and not there? <laughs> this is something wrong with this screen. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I don't know why that's, I've never hap, had that happen to me before. Um, okay, uh, well, uh, I guess my pointer isn't very strong. Is there another pointer by any chance? No, it's the screen job. Yeah, but it's kind of weak, but you can see it. <laughs> well, well, that's better. Okay, all right, I'll try. This is, I'm not used to doing this two hands, but, um, okay, so, so look, uh, you know, we learn about symmetry when we're, you know, freshmen undergraduates, and we learn that, you know, if you can understand the symmetries of a problem, then you can simplify it and divide it up into simpler pieces, and, um, and gives you, a, a, you know, profound conceptual uh, simplification, okay? A little bit later in your sort of undergraduate education, you learn that uh, if you can understand the symmetries, then you can understand deep ideas like conservation laws. Conservation of energy, momentum are all coming from uh, principles of symmetry. And, you know, um, a little bit later on, you learn that um, actually ideas of symmetry actually allow you to understand the, um, the difference between different kinds of phases of matter by um, understanding the patterns of symmetries um, that uh, um, a phase of matter either has or, um, or does not have. Okay, and so of course what symmetry is about is it's about what you can, um, you know, the ways that you can change a system um, in order to keep it the same. Okay, so, uh, so in these little pictures, I love these pictures actually, if you Google wallpaper group, they have all of these uh, beautiful pictures of all of the different two-dimensional 
um, uh, uh, space groups. So, 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 um, so this is kind of fun to look at. But, but you know, so, so, so there are all these um, different kinds of uh, things you can do to a system. You can translate it or rotate it or reflect it that, um, that, that keep it the same. And understanding all of those gives you a powerful classification tool for understanding, understanding matter. Okay, so um, uh, so the idea of topology is an equally deep mathematical uh, uh, idea, and it's something that maybe you don't learn in freshman year in in college, um, but uh, maybe you'll learn it a little bit later. And um, and so the idea of topology is, you know, um, what can you do to a system? You know, or what stays the same um, when you uh, change a system? Okay, and so um, so. So, uh, so, so, you know, topologists are interested in the mathematical properties of objects that stay the same when you continuously deform that object, okay? And, um, you know, if there was possible for me to get a better pointer, that would really help. <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, so, um, uh, uh, um, so, uh, so just as a as a as a uh, simple, very simple example, um, you can think of the uh, uh, the surface of a uh, of this orange here as a sphere, okay, and the surface of a bowl is kind of like a sphere in the sense that you can, if you imagine this was made out of clay, you could smoothly deform it so that one sm uh, turns smoothly um, into, the, into the other without doing anything drastic along the way. Similarly, the surface of a donut is the same as the um, surface of this uh, coffee cup because, again, if it was made out of clay, you could imagine stretching it and molding it in such a way that uh, the whole of the, uh, of the donut turns into the handle um, of, the, of the coffee cup. Okay? And so, um, so what topology is about is it is about uh, uh, you know, describing what is it that's the same about these, but what is it that's different about the sphere and the donut? Because of course you can't uh, uh, stretch and mold a sphere into a donut without poking a hole in it, and that's um, against the rules. Okay? And so, so of course this is you know, sort of the simplest example of a very deep um, uh, set of um, ideas, um, but um, uh, so there's something sort of uh, discreetly different uh, between these, and, and this gives the idea of, of these uh, sort of quantized topological numbers that can distinguish different topological uh, states. And um, so, so the idea that I want to introduce you to is that these ideas of topology, just like the ideas of symmetry, can be used used to distinguish phases of matter. Likewise, the ideas of topology can be used to distinguish topological phases of matter. Now, um, so, so the, uh, um, uh, you know, so the, you know, the ideas of symmetry and topology um, uh, in physics go back a long way. Okay, and so this, these are certainly um, uh, things which have been, uh, you know, uh, 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 studied for, uh, for decades. Um, what is a little bit new in the last, um, say, 10 years or so um, has been um, a deepening of our understanding of the interplay between symmetry and topology um, in, um, in, in terms of um, for understanding uh, electronic phases of matter. Okay, and so it's this interplay between symmetry and topology, which is which is what I'd like to um, uh, spend a fair amount of time uh, uh, discussing. Okay, so um, so symmetry and topology. So um, now, so so the way the way in which uh, topology uh, enters into the discussion of um, uh, of phases of matter. So what you need to do is you need to, um, uh, in order to talk about topology, you have to have a, a notion of what it means for two things to be the same. Okay, what it means to be one thing to be related to another by a, a, a smooth continuous a deformation. And so, so the idea um, in physics is, is basically, um, it comes from the uh, principle of uh, adiabatic continuity. Okay, and um, so the idea is, is that if you have a, a quantum system that has a ground state that is separated from its um, excited states by a finite energy, okay, then um, there's a, uh, uh, a very important result in quantum mechanics that if you change the Hamiltonian of the system very slowly, okay, much more slowly than the time scale defined by the energy gap, 
then the system, even though you're changing the Hamiltonian, the system will basically follow in the ground state. Okay, and so this is the idea of adiabatic uh, continuity. And, and so what this allows one to consider is you can consider two states to be the same topologically if you can, vary, if you can adiabatically connect one to the other. Okay? And so this leads to the uh, notion that uh, two states are topologically the same if you can deform one into another um, without uh, closing the uh, energy gap. Okay, um, to the, you know, and now, uh, so the interesting situation will be if, um, if there are states that you can't get to um, without going through a transition, um, through a, 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 a quantum critical point where the gap separating the ground state from the excited states goes to zero. Okay, and so, um, so, uh, so it will be interesting to sort of understand what kinds of uh, different states you can have and what's the nature of the uh, transitions uh, between them. Now, um, so this, uh, in general, is a really hard problem. Okay, and uh, so it's a really hard problem which um, even today we do not have a complete uh, understanding of. Okay. Um, uh, now, um, uh, uh, so it's very useful to be able to sort of divide the problem into simpler pieces. Okay. And um, so, uh, so, uh, so you see, in general, when you're describing a phase of matter, you're describing a system that has many, many, many degrees of freedom. Okay. <laughs> Does it work? That's a little bit better, Mal. <laughs> My background's too white. I see. There's something about the screen that's weird. Can you try this and see? Well, that's a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> okay, this has never happened before. Okay. Well, okay. So, so, um, I. Uh, you want to use the pointer on your laptop? You just, uh, uh, yeah, I think I th I'll try just doing this, but um, okay. You see, if I stand over there, then I can't see it. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, so, um, I, so things are much simpler. You see, so in general, the many-body problem is very hard. Okay, understanding states where you have ten to the twenty-third particles. Okay, um, are that's unmanageable. Okay, um, so uh, um, uh, uh, things can be um, much more manageable if one restricts th the discussion to states that can be described within what I'll call band theory. Okay, and so what band theory uh, describes is it describes states that are adiabatically connected to a system of non-interacting fermions. Okay, um, and now this is, uh, you know, there are actually many interesting materials that fall into this um, category, okay? And so there's, there's still uh, interesting things left, even within this very restricted um, uh, space of, of, of states, okay? And so, you see, the simplification that we get by um, describing things in terms of uh, non-interacting fermions is that um, instead of uh, uh, classifying a general many-body state, what we can do is we can classify a 